All right, everyone, it is now 635. I'll go ahead and begin. Uh, welcome. This is the historic South side improvements uh, city project number. 102932 presenting today is Jose Orozco with myself. Uh, for the city of Fort Worth. The purpose of this meeting is to provide an overview of the project scope and the proposed improvements of the and the information regarding the upcoming construction schedule. Uh, okay. Bear with me. For some reason, my screen stopped sharing. Uh, can hopefully everyone can see my screen. Yes, sir. I can see your screen. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. On the agenda today, I plan to give uh, an overview. Uh, the summary of improvements, some basic construction information and construction. Uh, the proposed construction schedule and at the very at the very end, if you just chimed in, we'll have it open for questions or comments. Uh, project overview. The project limits are shown on the right. The uh, limits for are in segment 1, which is Arizona Avenue down here on the south end of your south. Or bottom right side of your screen, uh, East Magnolia, which is in 2 parts. The 1st part on the west side of 35 and the other segment is on the east side of interstate 35 W. Morphe. Just beneath that 1. Myrtle. Further beneath that 1 segment 5. New York Avenue segment 6. It's also a long. It's the longest segment. Up in the upper right hand of your screen. Segment 7 is Stella, which is in this segment. Segment 8 is Williams, which is tees off of Stella. Segment 9 is Vickery Boulevard over by the railroad. Segment 10 is the alley between Stella and Broadway or the alley north of Stella. Segment 11 is the alley between Kentucky and Williams, which is a small segment just west of Williams in right here. Segment 12 is Maddox, which is a little piece coming off of Arizona. Segment 13 is Missouri. A small segment off of Magnolia. Which I'll explain later. Evans. Just a small portion. And Daggett. Daggett, just a small section and I'll explain the limits as I go through the presentation. The summary of the improvements. The current ex condition of the roadways as everyone's aware, the. Paving is damaged broke. Uh, there's broken curb and gutter. There's damaged asphalt as you can see in the picture. In the bottom right, uh, it's cracked, it's missing paving, and it's also missing curb and gutter. Uh, in the bottom left picture, you can see there's no curb and gutter on one side, and there's curb and gutter on another side. And in another segment, you can see the same thing in the upper right corner, or it has gaps in in between. Some of the improvements that we're doing, we're adding, we're installing approximately 7,949 linear feet of new water pipe in different sizes. In Magnolia, we're placing a 12 inch water line that this is Magnolia right here. Oh, sorry, right here. In Arizona, we're replacing the six inch water line with an eight inch between Allen and Magnolia. 
And also we're e extending waterline in Maddox. In the other side of the freeway, we're adding eight inch water in Magnolia between Evans and the freeway. And then we jump over to uh, Stewart to New York. The segment between Evans and Stewart was pre just previously installed as part of the, uh, another project. And uh, also we're placing eight inch water in Myrtle Street down here on the bottom end of the page, only in the segment from Evans to Illinois. In Williams, we're adding an eight inch water main between Broadway and Daggett. And in Vickery, this is the more intrusive area. We're adding a 24 inch water at one end, transitioning to a larger pipeline of 30 inch along Vickery. And also in New York, we're adding, we're installing eight inch water in segments. In I'm in a meeting. I'm sorry? In New York, I'm adding, or we're installing water in segments. Uh, as water is not continuous along the entire length of New York, it's in segments and mostly in crossings where we have different street crossings from one neighborhood to the other. Also, we're installing approximately 2,400 linear feet of eight inch sanitary sewer in the alley north of Stella. And the alley west of Williams. Williams continues up here. And also in Daggett from the alley west of Williams to the alley east of uh, Williams. And we're also installing sewer, eight inch sewer in uh, Vickery in a small segment of Vickery. There's also a segment over here that we're installing that's necessary as part of the, uh, to accommodate the water relocations or installation that we also have to replace. It's uh, 18 inch and that's closest to the highway service road. The additional sewer line that we're doing is also located in a portion of New York between the alley uh, north of Cannon to the alley south of Cannon, as shown on your screen. Coming back to Magnolia, we're installing 467 linear feet of new storm line. This segment in the middle that goes from Evans to the east was previously installed in another project. We're continuing the work from Evans to Missouri and only replacing down to where we show it on the left of the picture. And this is to reroute the, the storm from its current position to wh where we show it on the plans or in, in your slide. To summarize all the improvements on all the streets that are, all, all these streets are going to be re rehabilitated in asphalt, which is approximately 26,000 square yards of asphalt and approximately 14,000 linear feet of curb and gutter. It's will also be improving the safety and provide pedestrian amenities, constructing approximately 29,500 square feet of new sidewalk, 23 new ADA ramps, 
and this will be to fill in the gaps where sidewalk is missing or there's and or there's no ramps as well as adding uh, 25,000 square feet of driveways. In addition to that, we're reconstructing 10,000, uh, just shy of 10,800 square feet of damaged existing sidewalks, 34,000 square feet of uh, I mean driveways, and 34,000 square feet of sidewalks, and 67 of the ADA ramps that are damaged or non compliant. Some construction information. Um, how will we know construction starting? First, keep an eye out on your front door for a door hanger from the city of Fort Worth. You'll receive two door hangers. The first will say construction starts in seven days. The second door hanger says construction starts tomorrow. The inspector will include his or her business card and information on the door hanger. Will water be turned off? Water will be turned off for a few hours when service is transferred from the existing line to a temporary water line. And when the service is transferred from the temporary water line back to the new line, these switch are, these switchovers are done typically during the day. The contractor will knock on the door and let the customer know when water will be shut off. On the picture on the right, you can see an example of the temporary water main that's being used during construction, while we're, or prior to during construction. Can't right now. Do you replace the water line up to the house? The city replaces the water line service to the property line. The service line from the meter to your home or business, that's considered private plumbing. And in the event of a leak, repairs need to be done by a licensed plumber at the homeowner or business owner's expense. The city is responsible from the meter into the street. If you see water running, down the street, please don't turn it off. Before we can connect your service to the new water line, we have to flush the line. This is to ensure pu the public safety. Uh, we have to clean and make, disinfect the water main uh, prior to put, putting the new main into service. On the picture is an example of a main being flushed prior to being put into service. How does the temporary line impact your home or water bill? Well, a temporary water line ensures that you're not without water during the construction activity. In the summer months, the continuous flow of the water, uh, there's, in the summer months, the continuous flow keeps the water from being stagnant since it's a, an above ground line. During the winter months, we keep flowing the water to keep the water mains from freezing. And customers should do the same. The bill for your water while you're on temporary is based on an average of your previous month's usage. Will we need to access your property? This construction is in the street. If Fort Worth needs to access your property, we will contact you. Will your sewer service be disrupted. Sanitary sewer service will not be interrupted. New service cleanouts will be installed at the property line, as will be shown in the next slide. Here you can see the, res the responsibility. The street or property line is depicted by this dash line where the blue being the city right of way and the cleanup either inside or just outside the uh, this 
city right away. As you can see, we'll have typically a clean out at the property line. Will construction affect my irrigation? The contractor has, has to cap the irrigation lines before construction can start. The contractor may ask property owners to turn off the irrigation so the sprinkler heads can be located and flagged while they do their work. The contractor will replace capped or damaged irrigation systems. Will I be able to access my driveway? During, during the pavement construction, there will be times you will be unable to access your driveway. And this is main, mainly to ensure that the concrete reaches its proposed strength. If it's driven on prior to that, the concrete will crack prematurely and will and will not last. When the pavement is being placed directly in front of your property and you will not have access when the driveway itself is being replaced, the inspector and the contractor will contact you prior to construction. What happens if my property is damaged? The contractor will take pictures. We also ask that you take pictures of your property uh, and of any damages you may have that may have been incurred. Will there be lane closures during construction? There will be lane closures when the contractor is installing the water and the sewer lines during while the street or the subgrades being prepared for paving. Signs will be posted to alert motorists. The hours of construction are from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and if requested by the contractor, 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. on Saturdays. We do not work on holidays. Will the city's trash truck be able to pick up my trash during and recycling during construction? If your side of the street is closed on your scheduled trash collection day, the contractor will take the trash and recycling carts to the opposite side of the street. So your trash can be, so the trash collection vehicle can pick up your garbage and recyclables. How do I report an emergency or non-emergency? The city of Fort Worth has a for, has an app called as pictured as shown in the, on the right hand side. It's the My Fort Worth app. Uh, we do encourage everyone to download this app. It's a very powerful tool, and it is Apple friendly and or iOS friendly and Android friendly. Everything can be reported in there uh, as for emergencies, water uh, call centers on there, various other issues that you have or you see can be reported through the app, not just related to the project itself. Some of the construction phasing. Typical construction process. As mentioned before, the utilities will be installed first, along with the new service connections to each. On the left, you can see the green colored PVC sewer pipe. And they will connect the sewer services to this. And the middle picture is a picture of a blue water PVC water pipe. And the water services will be connected after the main is installed. When complete, there'll be a temporary trench covering up the main. And at a later date, the contractor will come back and replace the entire street. Inclu including removal of that temporary asphalt. Typical asphalt construction uh, first go comes with the installation or removal and then installation of the new curb and gutter. Then as well as the uh, driveways. 
and then they'll come back and stabilize the subgrade. They'll mill up the road and then stabilize it with a special chemical and cement mixture and compact it. After it's compacted and it's had its proper time to cure, they'll come back and place the asphalt. When we're done, the new pavement and concrete and cur curb and gutter will look as similar to the pictures that you, you have here, where you see the new asphalt paving, new curb and gutter, and sidewalk, including the as well as new concrete driveways up to the back of the sidewalk. We do not pave the driveway up to your, your house. Here's some more pictures of proposed improvements. Uh, as mentioned before, the new sidewalk, new ADA ramps at intersections. The schedule from the contractor that we've gotten, uh, they plan to start construction on the 8th of July. They intend to start at Morphe and Myrtle Street first with their uh, their paving crew or not the paving, the utilities and Morphe does not have utilities. So they'll go ahead and start with their uh, paving activities on that one. As mentioned before, it's an asphalt street. So they'll do the curb and gutter first and then come back and stabilize the road and pave it. Next, they'll start on the longest segment, which is New York Avenue. They'll be starting that in August and they anticipate completing in April. Magnolia and Missouri, they'll start in October and they plan to finish by May of the following year. Arizona and Maddox, they'll begin that road segment in the beginning of the year and plan and, and anticipate to be complete by August. Williams, Daggett and Stella will begin in March of 25 and they anticipate completing by October of 25. And then the alleys of Williams or the alleys west of Williams and north of Stella, they anticipate starting in February and ending in approximately May. And then Vickery also beginning in January and finishing in September. And the anticipated completion of construction is October 1st of 2025. Barring no changes or surprises. Where can I get more information? Uh, below is the link for the uh, project. You can, you can also go to the city of Fort Worth website and do a search under the project number. The project number is 102-932 and search for it in the search bar. The project map, the project map, project summary and updates will be linked to this project page. My contact information is here again. My name is Jose. My direct phone number is listed here as 817 392 8785. The assigned construction inspector for the project is James Glenn, and his information is here. His phone number is 682 432 4483, and our emails are listed there as well. At this time, I open it for any questions or comments anyone may have. Jose? Yes, ma'am? Lorraine Miller. I, I live in the historic South Side. I just got this notice at 117 yesterday that you were doing this, and it's not on the regular notice that I get it's the city Fort Worth whatever Texas City Fort Worth 
why so late? And why are you using this horrible WebEx? It's hard. I've, I've been for the last 30 minutes trying to get in. And then if you explain, what price, is this where the yellow flags are in the front yards now? Is this a project that you're talking about? Yes, the yellow flags, those are done by the- uh, Contractor? Well, actually, no, that's done by the utility companies. The yellow flags are indic indicative of the gas main. Atmos has been out there marking their utilities um, for themselves and for our surveyors and the uh, contractor. So they know where their utility is and make sure that it matches what the plans show where they're supposed to be. Okay, so is this the only way the city is going to communicate with us through this WebEx? It's hard, it's difficult to get in. You uh, guys don't do Zoom? I don't have the answer to that. Um, uh, well, let me just yeah. say WebEx is difficult Mark, and it's, it's, it's not, it's not user friendly. Is, is Laura, are you still on? Can maybe you can address that? I think Laura is currently out of pocket with the other meetings that are running simultaneously. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Miss Lorraine. I, I don't have an answer for you for the WebEx portion of this uh, presentation. I want to make sure you said you prefer to use Zoom. Is that correct? Zoom or, or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Teams, anything. This WebEx is okay. like it's antiquated. It's it's hard to get in. You put the information in, it doesn't accept it. Then you put it back in. It said, "Oh yeah, okay, that's all right." And then it'll move to another step. Then ask for the same information over again. It's it's crazy. Okay, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. We will make a note of that. Yeah, and that okay. Thank you, Miss Miller. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, excuse me, this is Jerry Williams. And I was just wondering, uh, since this, it was okay for me to get through to, but I thought it was going to send me out. Will there be another meeting, hopefully that, you know, where, you know, if we wanted to see or hear this again, between now and before you get started where, you know, because I'm sure some people uh, miss some of this. So will there be a way for us to, or, or for you to, you know, come back to us with this information? Yes, the, this presentation is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the website so if you do a search, like I mentioned in the previous slides um, here, if you do the search, like I mentioned in this slide, this presentation should be attached to that web, to that website. Okay, and just enter the 102.932? Yes. Okay. And I also put a link, the direct link to the website in the chat if anyone wants to. Uh, click on it from there so they can save it. Okay, Jose, I, I had a, a quite I had actually three questions to kind of go together. Um, the, uh, the notification about the, uh, those homeowners, uh, some of those properties are vacant lots, like at the corner of Morphe and Missouri. Yes. Uh, there's no house there it's a vacant lot so will those owners be notified through mail through the registered owner about the construction work that's going to be going on in the neighborhood yes we we do send out notifications to every property owner that's affected on the within the project limits uh we do have base i'm not completely sure i believe it's based off of county records 
Um, mm -hmm. And that's the address we have that we send it to. Okay, gotcha. And um, when is your projected bid date for this project and your MWBE goal as well? The project's already been uh, bid and awarded. Um, okay. So at this point, we are going to construction and our contractors on the call as well. Our contractor okay. plans to begin uh, on the 8th of July. Uh, that doesn't mean they're going to be breaking ground on the 8th. That, that means they'll be getting their equipment out there, getting started, putting their mailers out so they can begin breaking ground uh, at the very uh, first possible moment. Okay, and and I guess the last question will be, what about their storage yard? Will they need uh, neighborhood storage to store their equipment um, as a safe harbor when they come back? If so, um, I'm at the corner of Morphe in Missouri, where they'll be working at. Well, this uh, this is more directly towards our contractor Zach. He's on the call. Okay, he could answer this for you, Zach. Are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here, um, and we appreciate that. Um, our our stuff will be staged, and there's multiple streets on this project, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll we'll stage everything in just the city right away. Um, we'll try to try to keep everything, you know, um, sightly to where it's just not an, an eyesore, but um, it it'll move um, periodically as we move. So. Um, but but no, it's answer your question. No, we don't need any uh, storage, per se. Uh, but we do appreciate it. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, were there any MWBEs out of the local neighborhood chosen for this project? Yes, there was. Uh, there was a goal set, and the contractor did their best effort to meet that goal. Um, I don't have that information off the top of my head. There, if there was an so NBE it, goal for, uh, and the contractor is in compliance with that NBE goal. Okay, they just did good faith effort? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Jose, question. Um, I didn't catch the very beginning of this meeting. This is James. The bonds for the street repairs uh, is that part of the bond money, or is this something different? Are these bonds are allocated from somewhere in it, somewhere else? This project is funded differently. This this project is funded through TIF funds, the tax incremental funding. This is this project is not part of the bond uh, projects. Okay. Other questions. What what TIF does it come from? Uh, TIF number four. I think it was TIF four. Mm -hmm. If memory serves me right. Yeah, yeah TIF four would be the only closest TIF. I think that's what I was assuming it was TIF four. Even though the streets are out of the TIF, I believe, but I'm assuming it's still funded by TIF four. Yes, and there's also water department funding on this project separate from the TIF, um, and that's because they have in order to do their uh, appropriate um, network of their water system or sewer system, they do a, additional work in relation to the ongoing work of the project. That will come from the improvements from the street, correct? Uh, no, that comes directly from the water department. Okay. Okay. So they can find TIF money when they want to find TIF money. Yeah, according to the ordinance. Yeah. So how much how, I, how much TIF funds was uh, allocated? Can I can I something? Um so TIF four, the New South Side, they agreed to fund this project mainly because of New York. So New York is on the limit and it serves the uh, TIF. So we went to the TIF board and they agreed to fund it originally. Mm. And then we needed more money, and then the city paid seven hundred thousand of general funds, 
uh, into the project. When we bid the project, it came over budget. We had to go back to the board. And since they agreed to fund it in the beginning, they also agreed to fund the increase. Mm. They think over three and a half million of this project. So it is sustained. It's a lot of money. Uh, they bank okay. in this project. And then we had to go to the attorneys and we had to go and make sure this is can be done since some of the limits outside the, the TIF, as you know, but because of New York is a major work and it have and the major cost is being done on New York. New York have doesn't have Corban Gutter and most of the improvements are in New York. So they agreed to do that. Okay. Now were some of the funds ARPA funds too? No, there was no ARBA fund. That project did not qualify for ARBA fund because okay. ARBA doesn't pay for street. ARBA pay for water, but water did not want like this money. They already have their own funding. So water department. This construction cost is over $10 million. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Ms. Mary. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mary. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? So tell us again when this project will start. Well, well let me back up. So what I received this yesterday, the notice yesterday, and sent it around to some of our neighborhood folks. And to a person, they said they had not received it. So what listing are you using? Can you define what you mean by listing? Well, what names are you using? What homeowners? Because everybody didn't get it. The, the, the few of us that are here for the historic South side, you know, I just happened to troll my emails yesterday afternoon and saw it. And then I sent it out to everybody and I asked them, had they received it and knew about it? And nobody said, no, they didn't know. So what kind of, what kind of mailing list or email list are you using? Well, the mailing list, that's something we get from the CAD, um, the Tarrant County Appraisal District. The uh, social media uh, and email, that comes from a different source. Uh, Laura, are, are you on the call again? Um, she could answer more to uh, your questions to those concerns. Well, the point I'm making, you're not reaching people because um, a lot of us didn't, ha had no idea until this popped up on my email and I sent it out to a few folks. Understood. Yeah, we don't even get a district newsletter to know about the upcoming construction or when it was upcoming, it's already passed. Understood. Um, I'll, we'll pass Jerry, that information to our, yeah. out, to our and outreach. I was going to ask Ms. Jerry, since she kind of mentioned it, our neighborhood meeting is on the 10th of June. Ms. Jerry, is that a possibility that you and Jane would consider putting this on our agenda so people will know? Yes, ma'am, I will. I had planned to send out uh, an early email and uh, text messages to people to let them know some things that, you know, I just found out about. So yes, I'll make sure it's on there, Miss Lorraine. And, and it, is it um, uh, is it possible then that we could get the presentation and put it up on our screen so people can actually see it? I don't know. That's that's another technical. Uh, we don't need to. Yes, it will be available. It will be available for the next meeting with project notes. Yes. Yeah. And it will also be available on the website, a copy of this presentation and the, uh, a PDF of the slides will also be available. Yeah, it was just a poor outreach of, you know, of neighborhood owners and, and even property owners. Cause I, I didn't get notification either. And um, I'm pretty sure uh, we can discuss internally. Didn't. Okay, I can. Can you send us an email with the date and the time of this uh, meeting, the neighborhood association meeting? We can discuss internally and see if we can send someone. Maybe can answer question or something there. 
Who, so, she, who would we need to send that to? Uh, uh, yeah, send it, uh, Jose and uh, Greg, can you put in the chat my contact and your contact information? Or you can send it to Jose and he can send it to us. You have Jose information. Yeah, my contact information is on the screen. And we can discuss internally and we decide uh, we can send someone to the meeting if you need someone there to answer questions. Yeah, because oh. Hillside, they won't meet again till the next three quarters. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, send us the information, the times, the dates and everything. And then we can see if we can, who, who can go to that meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will send that to Jose. Um, I'll have that out to him tomorrow. Look, our community meeting is on, like Ms. Lorraine said, on the 10th of June. We meet at the Southside Community Center at 6 o'clock in the evening. Okay, it's a Monday, right? Yes, ma'am. The second Monday of every month, we meet at Southside Community Center from 6 to about 7.30 for our community meeting. Okay, we'll, we'll see who can attend because, you know, summer vacation, we'll see the calendar and check uh, if Jose is available to go to the meeting and answer any of your questions and all of that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I just got one last one and I'll shut up. So the the question about the MBE, so are you making, is the contractor making a good faith effort or he's already reached the quota or exceeded the quota for the MBE? I believe if memory serves me right, the the contractor had on this project had to do a good faith effort. They came close, but just shy of the goal. Um, what is the number on the MNC? What's the goal? Okay, so they um, on the MNC they had a twenty percent goal, and uh, they have they have committed to eleven percent with a good faith effort. Eleven. Eleven. So what does that mean? You said they committed eleven percent with a good faith effort. What does that mean? A good faith effort. Go ahead. I'm sorry. They're going to do 11% of the work they didn't, they didn't reach out to or didn't find any MWBE contractors that could do the work, including the trucking and the hauling. That was for all their efforts, the trucking, the, con the concrete, the asphalt paving, all of it. Mm -hmm. And where did they put the that effort? Where did they put that information out to? Yeah. Yeah. Procurement. They submitted all that information to us and we submitted, we forwarded that information to the, the so diversity we, office. Robert Stern's yeah. office. Hmm. No external organizations from the city. You just, it went to the diversity office and it was up to the diversity office to Make Benetton. sure external organizations knew about it. No, nope. it was up to the contractor to reach out to, to contractors. The contractor to reach out. Oh. But he said yeah, he, so when, it went when to the, the diversity office. Well, they have to turn it into diversity because that's the whole point of the contract, just like Richard Knight's um, situation. So when you have a 20, the goal is 20%. So 20% of their goal could have went to a woman or a minority owned company, rather it been consulting, rather it been trucking, rather it been disposal, but they didn't, but they claimed, or they're claiming that they reached out to a certain certified list of vendors that the city provided, but they didn't reach out beyond those vendors. Okay. So, so basically, they're gonna. So basically, they're gonna self-perform this work. Yeah, they're gonna perform this work with people they already do business with. Exactly, Correct. or self-perform it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Another Correct. disenfranchisement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. So by the time y'all come on the tenth. Hey. Sometimes with this big projects are uh, is 
the need to be pre-qualified contractors. So they're doing yeah. water and sewer a lot, like six million dollars worth of water and sewer. And the only way someone can install water and sewer, it needs to be pre-qualified with water department. Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's a good, bit. but there's still the logistics of it. You have material and haul off and disposal. We don't want any material left on our street at night. On none of these streets, all material needs to be hauled off. Just when they found it, it needs to be presentable when people come in and out of our neighborhoods. So I think they, I think, um, I don't know who we need to talk to about that because I think the reach out when it comes to minority contractors need to be a little bit more. Um, they, I, I just think that it, yeah, it needs to be a little bit more thorough because. To say you only have 11% and you reached out and really nobody knew about it. And, you know, typically when you send out these uh, bids for the um, contractors, you do this well in advance. So yeah. I'm assuming nobody really knew about this because uh, I'm affiliated with a couple of uh, local here. Uh, Black Chamber uh, Commerce have a list of people like I don't know who they could have reached out to. All it takes is a fax and a non-responsive call. And the list, but I guess that's something we're going to have to look closely at at our, I guess, on 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 our uh, in the future, just because I I believe this is already been put in place, and you have your contractors and your contract staff subcontractors. So at this point, I guess there's nothing that we can do, but somehow we have to start being a little bit more thorough about how we're getting the list out and the information out, so everybody can have an opportunity to bid on these jobs. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. again, it's emblematic of of this evening because had we not known yesterday, what what was one flyer going out, I mean, we we would never have known that this was going on. That you were having the meeting to Excuse tell us. Excuse me, can, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Okay, it sounds like I'm here in a meeting inside of a meeting. I would like to. Uh, Meet with you guys. You said Southside Center, June tenth. Yes, that's what I mean. I think what you guys are discussing is something you all should do in your meeting, and I'll be. I would like to attend if it's okay. But well, we're just point, pointing it out. Wrong venue. Kind of with some discussions they Wrong need to know. Venue. Yeah, I understand. Wrong venue. No, right then you no, right because they invited us to the meeting and we just trying to point out some things that am I invited to the June tenth meeting? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's right. open Thank to you. everybody. Thank yeah. you. Right. Yeah, We're our meetings are open to everybody. If you uh, let me see if I can find chat or either I will send my inf uh, send the information to Jose. And he can, you know, since you want to be a part of our meetings, like I say, we meet every second Monday at the Southside Community Center at 6 o'clock p.m. And it's on the Neighborhood Services website, too. Okay, so, and so Jose, for future references, how and how were you guys sending this information out? We just don't want to miss anything else. The information will be uh, updated monthly on the web page mm -hmm. and as construction progresses, different things, uh, street segments complete on the longer segments. I can break it down block by block, uh, like New York Avenue or Arizona, well, Arizona only has 2 blocks and that's a pretty large segment, but, um, but New York's easier because I can put block by block. Of what their activities are, other streets are the rest of the streets are smaller. I, I can give updates that way. Um, the like I said, the the updates are done monthly on the website. Okay. And if there's. Big changes or disruptions, um, 
like I said, we, we will have the contractor and the inspector. Uh, they're both on the call. Uh, they will be putting notices on your doors. Uh, prior to the activity, like I mentioned earlier, the 1st card is 7 days before the 2nd card is the day before. And these will be the door hangers that we're required to place prior to uh, their activities. Other questions. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate everyone's time. All right, thanks a lot. All right, thank you, everybody.